Hey guys, what's up? So a lot of you have actually been asking for this specific price point of, ga of well, PC in general. And I've decided to, on PC Part Picker, kind of make a list of parts for the $1,000 budget price range. And I, I was going to actually buy some parts and use some parts I already have to actually build a $1,000 PC to show you guys and, and do benchmark stuff. The problem is that I actually figured out something else. Yeah, it's like it's kind of expensive to do that stuff and I don't make money on YouTube yet So we're just gonna do it for free online But um, there's some other things planned in the future where we'll be buying some PC parts for some reason So be excited for that. That's that's point. Let's get right into our first build This is the gaming centered only build. This is the person who wants to game Only maybe might do some light streaming or light recording and content creation down the line uh, but this is the gaming PC as you can see it's 1064 some of these prices are kind of incorrect I find at some places, but whatever this is what we've gone with so we have a Ryzen 5 3600 uh, We're not doing a 3600 X because that extra $50 has been proven to be pointless as the overclocking on the 3600 is Amazing, so you just get a nice overclock 4 gigahertz. You're having a great time Now we're going with liquid cooling because I'm the a AIO person I tend to only use all-in-one liquid coolers, including even on my graphics cards now. I like to use all-in-one liquid coolers. That's why I have the uh, the Fury X and then a liquid cooled Vega 64 coming. So be excited for that video. Um, so I, I personally use this Cooler Master Master Liquid ML240 uh, on my 7700K and it works great. You get a nice overclock. We stay at our boost clock the whole time uh, on it. So it's definitely good. Now you could drop that and just stay with stock cooling, uh, but then you can kind of you won't get as great an overclock, but you can save 60 bucks and just stay with stock cooling for now. And then we went with the X570 for a couple reasons. First of all, for that amazing upgrade ability, X570 should last for ne if there's a next generation, you know, Zen Zen 2 Plus or Zen 3 processor. So like the, if there's a 4600X that comes out in the future, that'll be great for that. So it's the upgrade ability. It's the overclock ability. We have great VRMs and all that stuff. And, and the X570 platform is great for overclocking and compatibility instead of buying a max or fresh board, which will be like the same price because this is reasonably priced for an X570. For reference, the B450 Tomahawk, which is last generation's less good than X470 uh, chipset is a hundred like twenty dollars. So thirty bucks more for X570. I'll take that uh, And it, you right out of the box it'll work with the Ryzen 5 3600 and then of course we have 16 gigabytes of 3600 speed memory because fast memory is great with uh, second or third gen Ryzen Zen 2 I mix that up sometimes so Zen 2 uh, and we have a nice 3600 speed memory DDR4 16 gigs is really all you need for gaming. That's like the minimum but it is also like the maximum and then we have a 512 gigabyte nvme ssd the reason we want nvme is not because like oh we need the super fast it's 60 bucks intel 660p nvme ssd is a great value it's actually better than a sata ssd and it even is faster so this will be for fast gaming and 512 gigabytes is plenty for all of your games you could have gta 5 which is like 90 gigabytes your operating system any files and even some recordings and of course you can add an external drive or add a hard drive down the line and of course we have the radeon rx 5700 because it's price to performance is the best right now uh 350 bucks now i personally would say wait for a partner card to come out because the blower style cooler loses so much performance and for the same price you could probably get a partner card of the 5700 but definitely the card we're going with this is all amd which is fine perfectly fine amd is great price to performance now we went with the NZXT H500 because it's a case that I personally used and, and like a lot, but you could definitely go a little more budget on the case if you're trying to save money here, like I said. Uh, same thing with the cooler. like so. But this case, I just know, works really well, has really good airflow, and it looks nice to show off all your components, especially if you want to change out other things. Now, of course, this uh, last one's a little bit weird, but with how power supply pricing is right now, I actually decided to get a 750-watt, 80-plus bronze certified Fully modular. I always use fully modular, so I recommend that. Now you could go budget, maybe get a 650 watt, 80 plus bronze, nothing less than 80 plus, 80 plus bronze, and nothing less than 650 watts, in my opinion, because you don't want to have to upgrade your power supply to down the line. You want your power supply to last for all of your upgrades. So this is a little overkill, yes, but it, I I think it gets the job done and it's great for the price, uh, and it'll be very efficient, saving you on your electric bill. So this is our gaming PC. You'll be getting 
hundreds of fps in all your favorite games csgo you'll be above 240 fps so you could use a 240 hertz monitor uh, fortnite you'll be above 200 fps at most parts of the map PUBG, you'll be above 100 i know because i play PUBG and it's very graphically intensive and it'll use it'll eat up your ram very quickly uh, any other game you could think of minecraft you could run your shaders to max even some ray tracing shaders even though this is, isn't a ray tracing gpu minecraft is great that's all I need to say. Now, let's move on to our next build. All right, guys. So this is our second build today. And this is a content creator's dream. This is the content creation build. This is the I edit with Premiere Pro, the editing with uh, whatever else you use to edit. This is the recording. This is the streaming, the editing, uh, even end gaming as well set up. That's why we have a – it's last gen, but it's a 2700X. So 3.7 gigahertz, actually higher base clock than the 3600, but you could get way more of an overclock on a 3600, especially with the new, uh, more instructions for clock and all that other stuff. Just know that the 3600 is better for specifically gaming. This is eight cores now, so you have plenty of cores for streaming and multitasking and rendering with Premiere Pro, which is what I use, but you could also use other editing softwares. But again, our ML240L is always great i love it it'll keep it nice and cool and get an overclock but actually with the 2700x you can really go stock cooling especially with that high base clock that it has um so if you want to drop the liquid cooler like i said i just personally like my thing is kind of a aio liquid cooling unlike jay's two cents who is kind of a custom liquid cooling it's just custom liquid cool is too expensive only ones are amazing they're beautiful they're pretty they're quiet and they work so i always go with these and uh then we have the MSI B450 Tomahawk we were just talking about. It's a great price, and it's great. It'll work fine with your 2700X, and you can even upgrade to a 37, 38, or 3900X in the future because you can BIOS update with your 2700X, so that'll be a great upgrade path. 16 gigs of DDR4 or 3000. Uh, we went 3000 speed to save a little bit of money, and we don't need the super fast RAM on uh, second-gen Ryzen. Uh, so 3000 speed works great. I use 3000 speed with my Ryzen 5 1600. Uh, and my Threadripper, they both use 3000 speed and they work fine. Uh, we have a one terabyte hard drive, especially since we're recording. Look, raw recording takes up a lot of space, so we can dump over recordings here. And we have a one terabyte SSD because we can. A one terabyte SSD for editing off of, so you can edit all your files at once and then move them to your scratch disk, which is your S which is your hard drive. And you can also have your games on it and everything. You can fit everything on here. Uh, Premiere Pro and all that stuff takes up a lot of space so you can put it on your hard or SSD while you're using it and when you're done with your files you can put them on your hard drive and then we have an RX 590 because uh, editing editing does use the graphics card while you're editing but to render it it's mostly CPU streaming you'll be using your CPU this GPU is great for gaming it's got 8 gigs of VRAM which is like my minimum basically 6 is I mean of course I have 4 gigs of HBM on my R9 Fury X but that's because it's HBM and it's beautiful memory so we got some GDDR5 on the RX 590 I personally believe it's a great card I've used it I love it it works for gaming it works in every game it's the greatest. And of course, we have the H500. Again, you can go more budget on that if you're not super looks oriented. I just know this is a nice case. That works uh, because I use it. And now we have our 750 watt 80 plus gold power supply because you're going to be doing a lot of editing. And you're going to be, if you're editing at this kind of caliber and you're doing a lot of streaming, it does take a lot of power from power supply. As you can see, our wattage is 459 watts under load. Like I said, 750 watts, still a little overkill, but. You know why not be overkill considering the prices for power supplies are so bad right now you might as well go with a good price performance power supply this is actually the one i use in most of my builds every uh i have had about six of these so far this and back when i bought them they were like 70 bucks so i think it's crazy that they're almost they're over 100 right now but this is a great power supply very reliable and will save you on your energy bill you can skimp on that a little bit and same thing with the case and you could even drop the one terabyte hard drive if you want to drop your price a little bit and if you're not super serious about streaming and, and if you just kind of want to do some light streaming you could drop down to a 2700 or a 3600 x but you will be losing either clock speed or core count with either one of those downgrades but that's really it guys this is kind of my one thousand dollar area as you can see we're a little over a thousand on each of them and i told you where you can kind of make budget choices that's really it this is kind of the one thousand dollar zone for either 
super creative or just a little bit cre like creative and creating stuff. So the creator's dream, as I call this, this is like what I would use. I mean, I used Threadripper because I just wanted to be extra, but this is what I would use if I was streaming off one PC or even this could be a streaming PC and the other one could be your gaming PC if you're looking to buy two and you just grab an Elgato, stick it in there and you're good. Dual PC streaming. That's really it, guys. I hope you kind of enjoyed. I'm sad that I couldn't like build one of these systems. I just don't have the money or the parts available, but that's it. If you like this kind of video, uh, Tell me in the comments and if you have any other price points you want me to do with my, I kind of try to do them differently because I don't want my videos to be the same exact as everyone else's. So as you can see, I always try to use the AAOs. I try to do things differently than other people using the 660p and the RX 590 because I want to actually have a different perspective on, on the parts that I use than other YouTubers. That's besides the point. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. If you didn't, tell me you don't like me. But that's besides the point. I've said this a thousand times. I need to end this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.